Hi everyone, Mr. Kevin here. How are you? So I'm building the carcasses. That's what they teach you in the uh, college over there. Uh, the cabinet boxes are called carcasses. So I'm building the carcasses. Today we're going to uh, put 45 degree notches in the toe kicks of the plywood. The first thing we do is mark out the toe kick. My toe kicks are four inches wide by three inches deep. So just mark it out with my little squares. So once that's done, let's put a little mark here. We mark this with our little square, 45 degrees. And this is what we're cutting out. Cutting out this section right here, this. So I'm gonna take my compound slide saw and I'm gonna cut into it. Boop. Stop right here and I'm gonna come back the other way. Cut the other way. And uh, slice the inside out that didn't get cut with my Japanese pull saw. Yeah, we'll take out the rest. So here's what it looks like before I do it. And I'll show you my setup on the chop saw. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all complete. Okay everybody. What I do is I just set my table saw or my, I set my chop saw up. I have a little stand and I just put the plywood in. So this is the side of the cabinet. This is the bottom. This is where the toe kicks get kicked out. This is where the toe kick is getting cut out. So the first cut's pretty simple. As long as you don't go past where you're supposed to go, just basically line that up. Anyway, so that, that's your first cut, and it's just square. Right and the left will be cut on the different sides of the saw. So this one, yeah, put your little stand. There's a little stand right there, so it's all... It's all called a candy wampus anyway. That's the same thing. You line up your line right there. Hold down your hunk of plywood. It's kind of awkward to have my finger locked at. And you just first you cut your straight line. And it'll go through, you know, to the line here. And the back side you're going to have to cut. I pre-finished all these because I don't like finishing the inside of cabinets when I uh, spray finish. I pre-finish everything on the inside, that way I just have to spray the outside. And it's not so gross, it doesn't come flying back in your face so much. There's a Kevinism tip. A tippinism from Mr. Kevin. So there's the layout of the pencil mark. We're going to cut that mitered piece right there. When you cut into it, you have to make sure that it doesn't go this way, it doesn't pull on you. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. I missed the pencil mark just by a little bit. And you can do two things. This is kind of, you can mark it here where the end is, and you can just go over like a pencil mark, and then that'll work. This isn't rocket science either. All right, so we're gonna cut. Okay, and that'll cut it like this. And what you have to do next, cut the back of the pull saw. And don't worry too much because most of that is hidden. I would say 90% of that. Well, I think it's all hidden basically by the by the toe kick and the face ring. Alrighty. And there it is. Look at it. The sun's kind of out. So that's how it's done. I'll show you me cutting them with my pull saw. Uh, sorry, I just ate breakfast a little bit ago. When I get the other two mitered, I'll show you how to cut them with the handsaw and then what it looks like when it's all said and done. Alrighty. Bye bye. Still there? Oh, damn it. Like I said before, I put a pencil mark out here, which I should have did, which I should have did, which I didn't do. Uh, You'll know exactly where they go. If you're doing a bunch of them, it really works. There we go again. Everything's up there. And you don't want to bridge this piece here with your blade. You just want to come up right up to the line. So there we go. And now I'll cut them out by hand. <laughs> All right.
I'll see you in a minute. Bye bye. <laughs> All right. So we got the Japanese saw, uh, pull saw. This one was actually bought in Japan. Anyway, oh, don't read this. Bad. I used to take this on planes, believe it or not, back in the day. And one time I got it out of the luggage and this was off it and there was blood all over the blade. <laughs> Some idiot decided to grab this thing. Sharp as hell. All right, so I have this little jig. Made a little jig. I have to cut into it right here. This also has a 45 degree angle on it. So when you're cutting this way, it'll just help you. I won't be holding it like this, but it'll help you cut because you have something to push against. See? Let's see. So, burp, burp, burp. so you go in this way and you cut that way. Take this finger here and push up against the jig. And just And if you go down, you're using a pull saw to the line and then raise up and then cut to it. When you're starting your cut, if you cut to the line first and then lift up and then cut down to it, whoop, it'll be good. One of the clamps I didn't use on my clamp shell, jaw clamps. I got like 60 million of these things. Well, not 60 million, but I got a stack that's about four feet tall. These are great for just this job. Slide it on there. Clampy, clampy. No hands. It's pretty good, huh? So I'm gonna do it without the jig. And this is the fast way of doing it. This is the way I usually do it. Uh, Cause you know, but you can make jigs. You can make jigs for everything. Jigs are actually good if you, uh, if you have the time to make a jig for this and jig for that and jigs. We'll have a whole show on how to make jigs and you know, things like that. So what we're gonna do now, I'm just gonna cut this by hand. I'll show you how I do it. It's not really super like, you know. What I'm doing is holding the back of the blade basically with this hand. Like just pushing against it. And then I'm gonna come up to this line. Right to the line. Right there. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut this way. So basically, oh, the light died. Yeah. This way, and you can see these quick grips. That's why you don't use them for clamping glued up pieces. Just, they're not that good. Just my opinion. Okay, so I'm right there. All right, so I came to the point and to the point. What's the point of this all? Okay. The miter piece is here. This is the straight piece. What we do with this, you gotta remember you cross cut. Ripper. And I'm just kind of come back this way. Voila. That's how I normally do it. You can make a jig if you feel more comfortable with the jig. I just do it by hand. The biggest thing is to just clean up this edge here, which I could do with a file really quick because it's a little lumpy from the uh, transition from the, the uh, Miter saw and the hand saw. Japanese pull saw. Some people call them other things. We won't use derogatory comments. Japanese pull saw. So anyway, I'm gonna do, I got two more to do, do this, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all said and done. So there you go, miter toe kick, uh, a mitered side, I guess. I don't know what you would call this. It's just a cabinet side with a mitered toe kick with a mitered and plywood makes it more, more, more beautiful. I have to figure out what to call my little tip. So I got two little tips. So let's say you're uh, mitering your piece and this one's still long and the piece is sticking out. If you want to figure out, you can either mark it right here on the edge and carry that over 
But what I usually do is put the pencil on the side of the cabinet and use my finger. Alright? And that'll just translate. And you just carry that line over. Like the middle of your finger. So there you go. And then you come and you carry that line down. You might have to make a couple passes to make the line. And then cut close to it up on your chop saw. It's one way of uh, doing it. You can measure, which is not what I would do. I always cut large and fit my way into it. So to get a nice tight miter here on the edge, uh, you can also make this go beyond 45. Cut more than 45 degrees off this cut. Just raise your, raise your piece of wood up. Yeah, unless your saw goes over beyond 45, which like I said, some do. This one doesn't. My big 12 inch Hitachi does, so. Anyway, yay. And the other thing, once once it's all cut, you got a piece mitered, uh, unless you're gonna permanently attach it to the toe kick, which I don't do, to save your tips so you don't ding them up. The leftover little cut off pieces, just take them, put them on the ends here. Tape them. You tape them on the ends, and uh yeah tape is your friend there's a video tape is your friend right here just tape a piece of wood on there it'll keep it from getting dinged up too much and then before you stain it you just uh you know take it off stain it seal it top coat it put the thing back on for shipment and you're good to go because if you leave it like this sharp and pointy it's liable to get uh hit damaged and then when you put it back on your cabinet, it'll look ugly. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And you have an awesome day. <gasps> Bye. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like it. It looks cheesy. Cheesy. I'd rather just nail that thing on there and it's just the way it is. <gasps> Let them do that. It's wood, and it looks more uh, furniture-y. Yeah, looks better. That's it. Ta-done. Done. done.